Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is David Palmer, Leo King, and Rich Lop here for the Awakening Experience here on HighVibe.tv. Super happy to have you all here. What is going on, Rich? How are you doing, bro? What's up, man? How you doing? You were out for a little bit. There. I, yeah, I was out, bro. Yeah, I was wondering <laughs> if it was going to hit you, man. That hit us at the beginning of December, and luckily we got over it just in time for Christmas. But, dude, our whole December was fucked. We were knocked on our ass with... Whatever fucking bioweapon they're coming up with now, man. They came up with a good one because that one, that one hit hard. Well, like I was telling Sophia, you know, I got sick in February 2020. And it was whatever the fuck that shit is. And, it, you know, I, I was like, this shit's not natural. It doesn't, it doesn't feel natural. Mm -hmm. And then in 2022, I got sick. And I'm like, whatever. This one was like that. Yeah. I was like, but you know, what didn't last as long because that one was like me out two weeks. This was out like I was like like nine days. Yeah. But still, man, there's some weird shit going on. And what's crazy, because you even said it best on one of our episodes. The shit's gonna happen and it's just gonna be happening in front of your face. And I just think it's hilarious, you know, you don't see anybody freaking out, but you know, it's crazy. You go online and stuff and now, now people are being really sick and they're all the, the all the hospital rooms are flooded, but they don't even say mm -hmm. it's an emergency. So how do you believe yeah. that it was an emergency in 2020 if it's the same shit happening and nobody cares now? I just yeah. think it's hilarious to be honest. I with keep you. trying to <clears throat> I keep trying to revert back to 2020 to kind of try to prepare myself for 2024, you know? Yeah. I mean, obviously it's not going to be the same exact cycle. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to play by the same playbook, but you know, really? we've been, we've been looking around at some of the shit that's been popping off here lately and they're grooming us. They're getting us familiar. If you look back, you remember 2020, I remember when they first started talking about COVID, I remember hearing them first mention it in November. And then they would kind of sprinkle it in the mainstream here and there. And then when was it March? They just flipped the whole world upside down. Yep. So now all this crazy shit's coming out. You know, I mean, it's crazier now. The stuff that they're introducing to us here in the first few weeks of 2024 is so much more mind bogglingly insane than anything that they were putting in front of us back in 2020. So it just, it's really seriously got me thinking that they're grooming us for the craziest fucking shit that we have ever seen in recorded human history. Yeah, we were, we were going to come up. We were so many names for the title for this podcast. You know, I think I was calling it like something groomers. I was calling it like fear groom or no something fucking hilarious. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of distractions to help people manifest this horrible future. Yeah. And I think that it reminds me of Pinocchio and pleasure Island. Like, uh, it's turned into where people have pleasure and I, you know, and this might be controversial, but I think that people don't realize that they have now become like drug addicts mm -hmm. to manifest the dark future. Yeah. Like yep. they, they like, and, and that might sound weird, but people don't realize it's like subconsciously hidden as to like, Oh, you see what's happening now and you see what's happening now. And then it becomes kind of that place to where you don't realize, but now you're in pleasure Island and it almost becomes kind of like all the attractions now. Like yeah. let's see what's happening with COVID. Let's see what's happening with the war. And then, and then, and then everybody's kind of putting all their energy into that instead of like right now is the most epic moment to manifest your future. It's manifest yeah. free zone. Mm -hmm. And that's really where you and I wanted to talk today. Cause <laughs> yeah, it's the calm before the storm, but, is that a bad thing? You know, storms are pretty awesome to me. Well, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it'll be awesome for some people and it'll be horrible for some people. Kind of like I tell all my clients who come to me because for some reason here for the last three months, 98% of the people who come to me for readings have been asking about career and finance. And that's not normal for my line of work. Normally on a monthly basis, it's somewhere around maybe 25% of the readings I do on a monthly basis are about career and finance and whatnot. 
But man, ever since November, I swear to God, like 98% of my clients have been saying, what's going on with my finances in 2024? Am I going to find a new job? What's going on with career? I'm trying to manifest this financial, whatever. Right. It's been about finances. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so nervous to talk about it because the only thing that I can tell people is that we're about to step into the craziest financial times that any of us have seen in recorded human history. Now, how exactly is that all going to play out? I'm not 100% sure, but we know that 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 the next two years are going to be focused around crashing the old system, <clears throat> crashing it. I mean, the new system is already running live parallel to the old system right now. Right. They have to crash the old system. And, and I'm just, I'm kind of nervous because, <laughs> because, well, I mean, because like in 2020, you know, some people rose up above it and were carried right. through it. Some people sank to the bottom. And right now, that's where we're being groomed and tested with all this crazy shit that they're coming out with and the aliens in Miami and, and you know, disease X and this and that and everything that we've been talking about. And some people are going to be into it like, oh, my God, oh, my God, you know, and, and getting clenched up with the fear. And I could see how it would be really easy to do that because if I stare at it for too long, it almost gets me. But then some other people are going to be like, no, nah, man, I'm going to go after my goals. I'm getting it this year. And that's going to be the, 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 the divider when it comes to this group of people is going to sink to the bottom and this group of people is going to rise up. It's, I think this is going to be the craziest financial year in regards to how many millionaires fall off and how many broke people like, rise up. shoot to the top. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think I, I feel because you're right. I feel like everything is based around changing the systems mm -hmm. and I, I you know using tarot it's like the tower card has arrived yeah so you got to look at it like that Every i mean time. and that this is a star card moment for people mm -hmm. and I, what what's nice about the tower into the star is the equalizing element of uh, everybody's kind of in that same and, and so of course people think well people are setting up in the world governments to make it to where they're the ones that are at the star but it's ironic because all the systems that they're going to crash affect them too yeah you know what i mean and so that that's what's really interesting to me especially you're just seeing already so much of the pushback and people the you know the media even the wef everybody was kind of you know hesitant to start saying things and knowing and like their whole thing of the wef was based off regaining trust with the public i'm like yeah. <laughs> i don't think they're you're ever gonna regain that trust back you know like that's like that's like having Dracula show up. I mean, I look like Dracula, and now it's all red here, and I got my hair slicked back and black, right? And just be like, "Yeah, I'm sorry, I ate a bunch of you motherfuckers and your friends and your family. Trust me, though, I won't do it again. Like, no, we're we're not going to trust you. So I I feel like you're right. I think it's financial, but it goes in all directions. I feel like people really are not going to. I hope so, at least, not not fall for these things anymore because i feel like when the storm comes it, it, it really is getting back to that grounding of like just think of like this year i have not been hearing people thinking about like what they want to go do with their future like normal like usually it's more like i'm going to do this i'm going to do this it's more questioning should yeah. i do this is that possible will i be able to do this can I do this? We're seeing things like, look at all the planes fucking falling out of the sky, fires crashing, doors flying off. You know, so, so already people are suspicious about flying as much as they were, not as much anymore. Everybody's kind of like in that hesitant space. But I think that what's cool is this is a huge opportunity right now to actually go do things that really we have to get out of our comfort zones and expand. Mm-hmm. That's the only way to rise up and to manifest higher is you have to get in your, you get, see the universe is coming through with an uncomfortable position for us to rise up. Like, I think people have to realize that instead of wanting to manifest comfortable, because if we want to manifest comfortable, we're not going to, we're going to stay in the horrible system. We're going to stay getting treated like fucking cattle the, the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that we have to realize that there's uh, assistance happening in many ways to make it uncomfortable for people to rise in there. They have to look at it as like storms are uncomfortable. You got to fucking button down the hatches. You got to fucking yeah. make sure all the fucking wood is probably underneath something dry. You got to start doing little things like that. And it can be kind of like, I think we deal in a society now where things feel like it's a, it's a bitch to do it or it's a frustration. Like I don't want to have to do all that shit. 
And that's the problem. Yeah. And I don't know if you agree with that, but I think that's the problem. Is oh, yeah. that, that li- the little stuff is a big thing yeah, in life. They, they've, they've conditioned us to think that way for decades. I mean, I personally believe they started doing it ever since they first came out with the TV. Because if you think about it from back in the 50s, like my grandpa would tell me stories all the time. You know, there was like one or two channels. Right. And, you know, ever since they started being able to advertise, what are they advertising mostly? Things to make life easier. Right. I know my grandpa, he grew up like fucking on a farm, dude. My grandma had a dirt floor. And she didn't mm-hmm. have a floor in her house. So they grew up having to get it. Right. And they were, you know, and and they, they sat and watched over the decades how they keep doing things to make life easier and more convenient and easier and more convenient. And then, and then they come out with the remote controls. So your fat ass doesn't have to get up off the couch and go change the channel. You can just sit and, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's just, they've been conditioning us for decades and decades to just want ease, comfort, and leisure. And I think they've been doing it on purpose because at some point it's going to get to the point where, you know, humans are so lazy and so just wanting to keep their fat ass on the couch, watching their TV and eating their junk food. And, oh, I don't want no trouble. I don't want to have to do all that. I don't want to have to do this. I just want to, you know, and, and they're going to be able to just steamroll right over top of us. It's been fucking decades in the making, you know? Yeah. And actually, I just saw a really interesting thing on X about this guy who it does business law for a living. And so when they say, oh, you're going to own nothing and, 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 and like it, yeah. that when you take the word reset, but you look at that from a law perspective and business law, it actually means being stolen from, mm. right? So if you think about all the debt that's occurred and people that are occurring debt for leisure, that they'll, you know, tap out. They're going to create something to where it's like, listen, don't need to worry about your debt anymore. We'll own it. And, and it's kind of like, I've been trying to tell people, it's like the reverse mortgage that they do for elderly people, right? Like once you reach a certain age, you can have the government never have to make a home payment again, but they seize the house once you're dead. Mm -hmm. That's where I think they're going is like a reverse mortgage in every area of life. Like, you know what? Don't pay for your cell phone anymore. But when you pass away, everything that you have comes back to us. And so I, I think that we're going to have to reject a lot of these systems that get rid of individuality and not fall for the easy trick. I, you know, I, I remember there was a, I took a job for a day and it was going to be about reverse mortgages. That's the only reason why I know it. And I remember calling these elderly people and be like, fuck you, you ain't taking my fucking house. Hmm. And I mean, people rejected it, you know, and this was like during the whole crash of 2008. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do the shop. <laughs> and fucking, but it never stuck out of my mind. I'm like, you mean to tell me that you can get to a certain age in this country and you can fucking like literally just say, you know what? I don't want to pay my house payment anymore. You know, when I die, I don't want to leave it to my kids. I don't want, I just want to enjoy my life, take my social security. But that's the other thing is I think that uncomfort zone is like people's social security. They, all those, those are going to be the things that are all going to be part of this crash you know people people didn't keep looking at me like i'm crazy but based off what i see over the next two years astrologically the end of social security and benefits that you've thought that you get are gone yeah and 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 you can already tell when you know think about how biden has been so obsessed about covid yet covid's going around and yeah or california the one state now that has the smallest, like if you have symptoms of COVID and you test negative, you're allowed to leave after a day. Every other state is longer. They went to the most lenient COVID law now. Mm. So the president that was the most COVID obsessed, forcing shots on people, the governor that locked down the hardest is the easiest at the moment when it's all ramped up. And everybody knows everyone's sick. So when I think, when I tell people, oh, if you look at the federal budgets, people think it's the military. No, it's Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare. And and so that's what they're going to gut. They're going to gut that. 
because there's no more, you know, people think they're going to just keep floating all the money they can. They already have done that. That's why you see all the inflation and everything. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to come for next. And the way they're going to do that is how they get you on to these new systems that there's going to be good systems, but they're not going to be the ones that appear first. The dark's going to show up with their dark shit first, the same Mm -hmm. way they did with COVID in 2020, like 2020, you know what I mean? Yep. 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 That's, I'm glad that you brought that up because I don't know how many people follow. I, well, I'm real, real picky and intuitive about who I follow. So when I mention the truth community, I'm only talking about a couple of people that I pay attention to and follow. But from, from the research that I have done over the past few years, yes, they're going to crash the economy and they're going to roll out the central bank digital currency. See, the transition that we're going to go through now, n- nobody is going to come save us. No, there is no knight in shining armor that's going to come save us. No president, no Donald Trump, no Jesus Christ, no nobody is going to come down and save us. We have to do it ourselves. So the people who are overseeing this operation are playing it out in a way so that the people see it and stand up and, and revolt. So the, the idea is they're going to roll out the central bank digital currency and you have to reject it. We have to fight back. We have to stand up and fight back. Nobody's just going to come in and say, oh, I got it for you. Let's get rid of the dark side. No, we have, because, because if we don't, if they just let somebody come in and save us, which they could easily, the good guys could easily come in here and wipe all this shit. And, 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 but in the next 50 years, we would end up right back in the the same spot, you know, because Uh, yeah, 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 100%. I I, got to say, because think about, think about this, how they used grandmas for COVID, right? Like, Oh, you know what? You need to stay six feet apart. You need to make sure you wear a mask before the shot so you don't kill your grandma. Mm -hmm. How better of a way to do this than to hit Social Security first and gut it and then say, well, if you were on Social Security, grandma should just get on to this. So it gets the kids to be like, yeah, I don't want to have to take grandma onto my house because that's the society we live in today. And I've been warning about this for four years with Pluto coming into Aquarius of like, Aquarius is all about humanity. You're an Aquarius. It's about people. But when Pluto's there, that deals with our deeper personal boundaries, our desires and our wants. So it's the knock on the door from grandma, like my social security is out. I'm losing the house. Are you going to take her in? Or are you going to be like, well, they do offer this CBDC program. And that, just like how they convinced all these people to fall for the bullshit of COVID, they're going to be like, yeah, grandma, go take that. Because people don't realize how many people are on social security, how many people are on food stamps, how many people are on all this shit. They're going to start there first. People think it's going to be this thing. It's going to be everybody all at once. No, no, no. They're going to do it just like COVID. Like it was just about old people at the beginning. Remember, it was just about cruise ship people. Oh, no, 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 no. It's going to start with those people. Then... Once they got those people lock and stock into it and it's working for them. Oh, then it, then it moves up to the next ladder. Oh, don't worry. We're just doing this for the people on social security. I, I think people really are thinking, Oh my God, it's going to happen to everybody all at once. No, no, no. They yeah. always start slow and they always push the story and they always use grandma. They're going to be using grandma again. And they're going to, and then, and then that's where I think if that happens, you know, if your grandma fucking needs a place to go, you better be a good human being and fucking take her in instead of fucking throw her out to the fucking digital sheep wolves, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be, uh, well, like you said, they're not going to do it all at once. I think it's going to be very controlled, you know, and, and we, we just have, we have to stand up and fight. And I think that we're going to because, like I've been saying, I said this at the event And I still firmly believe it. So mark my word. If I'm wrong, okay. But I firmly believe that they're going to do something very similar. They're going to flip the world upside down in some way, shape, or form. But there will be no censorship. Yeah. They're going to let all the information, all the, the truth, the lies, the bullshit, and everything in between be available to the public. It's already been happening right now, the first part of that. Yeah. They, they want you to see it because once everything starts crashing and going crazy, that's when people are going to freak out and go looking for answers. And, you know, they want the people to be able to wake up themselves. The people have to be able to see it for themselves. They have to be able to see how dirty and corrupt that system really is so that we stand up and fight back and take it back so that this never happens again. 
I mean, if you think what, what today just happened in Texas, you and I looked at it, I couldn't believe that the governor, I mean, that's fucking pretty gnarly that a, a state governor went to the federal government and basically said that the United States and its compact has been broken with the states. Mm -hmm. That's civil war shit. Yeah. That, that's one step from seceding the union. Like, that's calling out and saying that the compact... That's not a word you hear a lot. You know what I mean? It's not like you hear every day, like, yeah, the compact between the United States and the states has been broken. What? What? Oh, no, 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 no. So it makes you think already right there. I mean, what is all the old people in Texas going to do with their federal Social Security if Texas broke from the union? So people right now are thinking in the chat even, like, that's not going to happen. Oh, you're one step from it right now. Because everybody in Texas, do uh, you think that the government's going to give food stamps to Texas? That's the next move, right? Like You're not letting, you're not letting the Supreme Court do this. It, 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 it becomes a vicious cycle instantly. And that's how they've been using the border thing. So you have to look at everything has been maybe not for what we think it is, but more just about to encroach on more and take away and create you know, a player ready one society and you don't even get a nice VR, yeah. you know, it's more of a, a reality. That's just a little fucking CBDC fucking, you know, Biden phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That, 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 that tells you what you can't and what your carbon footprint is. And that, that's the place to me where I'm feeling like the biggest concern of mine is that people put themselves in their own spiritual lockdown. Yeah with what's happening like they they're fearful of what to do next or they 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 move to states because they're afraid of what's happening in their state mm -hmm. it's like a spiritual lockdown like instead of just freeing yourself and manifesting wherever you want to go and knowing that fucking everything's gonna fucking be yes. amazing but if you're reliant upon your manifestation off the same systems that lie to you mm -hmm. We've talked a lot about toxic relationships. People won't even realize that the relationship they have with their government is the biggest toxic. If you take money from the government, you work for the government. You are in a toxic relationship right now. You're in the worst toxic relationship of your life and you don't even realize it. I don't take money from the government. Even when they sent me that fucking check, I just made it a like something to like as history. Didn't cash it. Oh, I wouldn't do that. And th like, there's something weird about that too. Everybody's always worried about the shot. I'm always like, what about the injection of cash or people took PPP loans or people, right? Like all this shit, people have to look at themselves and be like, wait, I'm the cause of those problems. I took the money or I take the money. And, and this is going to be a whole new way of like, get out of anything dealing with the government money or anything like that. Cause it's a bad relationship. Yeah. I mean, see, it's, it, it becomes a touchy subject because <clears throat> people think that you're speaking evil into existence. You know, we come up to a nexus point timeline. You can't manifest this to happen or not to happen. We're moving into a new world. You know, we're the, the old, the old world, which every system that encompasses life on earth is going bye-bye. That has to happen one way or the other. What you manifest isn't whether or not it happens. It's how you float through it. This is why learning manifestation is so important. Because in times like this, it's going to happen. We're going to that nexus point timeline. We're moving from one world to the next. It's not like if the collective gets together, they can stop this from happening. Not that you would want to anyway, because this whole fucking system we've been living in, this whole time is a corrupt piece of shit anyways. It has to go bye-bye. So I think that's where people get hung up is that they know, oh, oh, don't stop saying it's going to be bad. I had one lady one time come to me and said something like, please stop saying 2024 is going to be bad. And I said, quit putting words in my mouth. I didn't say it was going to be bad. Right. I said, it's going to be crazy. I think we could all say that it's probably going to be crazy. Yeah. 2021 was crazy. But for me, it was crazy good. I doubled my income that year. Right. Some people, it was crazy bad. It's going to be crazy. It, shit's going to get shook up one way or the other. Your vibration, your relationship with the universe, and your ability to trust the process is whether or not you're going to 
float through it or sink to the bottom. I, I know I keep beating that drum, but I can't think of a way to make it any more clear because, you know, to get people out of this fear, you know? I know, and I think that's the hard part because, like, when, if you take it to more basic spiritual, just like when you're helping with somebody, a client, and they're wanting to leave their toxic government job or their toxic relationship or their toxic this or their toxic that, people are afraid of their best life. So that's the irony is what's crazy is how many people are afraid of manifesting their best life now. Yeah. That they've gotten even more jacked up into worrying about what's in the water, what's in the air, what's in this, what's in that. But then uh, what if I leave this horrible thing I don't want? And this isn't like new revelations or something. This is like what all of us in this community really, well, the ones that are good speak have been speaking about, but that's that's the, the crazy part to me about 2024 is how many people now are just like in matrix four just like oh we just nobody wants to get out of their pods we use fear and we make them feel like that the, uh, the way that he describes it the new architect and how they built the new matrix that's what happened in 2012 like the the, the reality we already shifted realities now this is like them trying to push you into that or you being like i that wasn't the reality that i'm going now bye bye and, and you're already seeing that in states calling out to the federal government today to people starting to be like, I'm not taking my kids to a fucking public school ever fucking again. Right. You don't have to live in a system world. It's a toxic spiritual battle happening. And it's very simple, but most people are tear. The people are like, Oh, I, uh, is, I don't want to hear if it's going to be bad. It's only bad because people are so afraid to manifest their own dream. Mm-hmm. People say, oh, I want to, but look at the data. Yeah. The data says 1% of the world manifests their dreams because Americans are in the 1%. That's what's crazy. Around the whole world, American citizens are in the 1% of the wealthiest people in the world. If you're an American citizen and your $35,000, $40,000 average salary is the 1% of the world. So when you think about that, the people complaining the most are the American people who mm -hmm. fucking, I can't manifest what I want. I'm not happy enough. I don't have what I need. I don't want this life. I hate this job. I hate this thing. Yeah. Well, fucking <laughs> manifest what you want now. Yeah. Didn't, didn't you see that? I saw <sighs> this video. Oh, three or four weeks ago of, of this, these, this African dude who was like, I can't believe these Americans. They're so crazy. I come over here and there's opportunities everywhere because he was living in a fucking grass hut right? in Africa. You know what I'm saying? His daily life consisted of having to fucking run from lions and tigers and shit. And then he gets over here and he said he could not believe the complaining that everybody in America is doing. Complaining about this, complaining about that. When he, he, he set foot on American soil and became like a multimillionaire in less than two years. Yep. And, and people just don't, that, that's the thing. That's what learning manifestation isn't about making money. You can do that with it. That's one of the bonuses. And I think that's the easiest place to start. But once you start learning how to do something like make money or, or, or whatever, manifest your dream car or something like that, you start learning how the universe operates. And then you can see open doorways of opportunity as you're making your way through life. So that whenever shit like this hits the fan, you can see the open door to skate around it. Does that make sense? Of course. I, I think it feels like to me with Pluto now and Aquarius, the last four years have been the setup for the upgrade for every single person. Mm -hmm. No matter how well you did in the last four years or you didn't, it doesn't matter. We all have to upgrade or take the red pill again. Like we were talking about in the last show. Like, you know, it's like you've taken the red pill. You got to take it again. You know, like there's like, you got to go through another fucking red pill. And I think that's the, the point is I think that at this moment right now, people have to realize like you can't just sit and around and be like, I'm perfect the way I am right now. And it's all good. No, we all have to go through an upgrade. Mm hmm a frequency upgrade, an upgrade in what we can manifest. And you can't be afraid of that upgrade because the way you, it's not about getting away from something as far as upgrading to where it's not even in your, it's not going to affect you. Mm -hmm. 
the only way that whether it's the financial system or whether it's these weird wars or whether it's the weird shit happening around the world is how you upgrade your frequency and vibration to where you're not even thought of in that system to be part of the thing. So when we talk about new earth and new worlds, to me on a much more grounded earthly level, it's that it's like, well, if you can update and upgrade your own manifestation to where you're in a place to where, well, you don't qualify for that. You're not in that thing. You're not in that. I mean, you got to have to look at it like cesspools. If you want to be stuck in the cesspool, when they come through with more toxic shit and then they put up the fucking spiritual lockdown, bah, everybody, you must take this. Well, you're the one who chose to sit in that manifesting and continue to manifest that life. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, like, it's like a toxic relationship. Like when somebody beats you every day, well, fucking, when you make excuses, like, well, I mean, they're, they're a nice person when they're not beating me. <laughs> I cover my black eye pretty good now. It's not a surprise when they come with a fucking crowbar to your face. I know that trigger will probably trigger people because they've gone through that and I'm empathetic to that. But at the same time, I'm like, people like to blame. Well, that person's a horrible person. It's like, you're just not the ho horrible person, but you're just as at fault for allowing that situation to happen when you, all the writing was on the wall. And I feel like this, it, to me, the whole, I, the, the storm that's coming in the eye of the storm and even the, the calm of it is the writing is on the wall. Instead of being afraid of the writing on the wall, it's just like, oh, stupid ass motherfucker about to hit me in the face of the fucking crowbar probably should end the relationship. <laughs> you know, well, let, let me, let me explain it like this. I'm going to make an analogy and this, I don't know if this rabbit holes a little bit too deep or not, but have you ever seen those things where they have that big, it's like a vibrating table and they pour sand on it yeah. and then they make a sound and then it goes into a geometric pattern. Yep. Okay. Well, what happens when they crank the frequency up? the geometric pattern gets all fucked up and scattered and then it arranges into a more complex pattern after it gets all fucked up and scattered and goes into chaos and then finds its way into a new more complex geometric pattern right this whole matrix we live in everything that you see the vibrations is what creates everything that you see we're going through a vibrational upgrade so it's got to, everything's going to get all scattered and fucked up. And then as the vibration raise, raises, everything is going to arrange into a newer, more complex geometric pattern as we raise up through the fourth dimension. It has to, it has to, everything has to get fucked up first. Does that make sense? Of course. I mean, I, I feel that's, that's like with where we're at, we're at a place to where there is no other evolutionary moment more greater than this moment. And, and so we all have to, evolve. you have to evolve out of, I don't like this anymore. My well, then stop manifesting because people don't realize being, there is no such thing as being stuck. Mm -hmm. You are creating the thing you hate. So there is no, I'm stuck in this situation. You're stuck in your comfort zone. Yeah. Like there is no, I'm stuck here. It's like, I'm manifesting being stuck because I'm staying in this place. And, and that self-work at this moment has now raised into the highest frequency. It might look like the odds are stacked against you by the way the world is, but the, the truth is that's a, that's, a, that's a complete weird little fantasy, like Pinocchio, like crazy fucking, you know, don't go into fucking Pleasure Island. Mm -hmm. Go off that and, and don't be a dumbass Pinocchio right now. Like here, the very godmother came, fourth dimensional being, like here's your wish let your conscious be your guide. Here's Jiminy Cricket. And you're just like, oh, dee, 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 dee. I'm going to go be a famous TikToker in pleasure land. Okay. You know, yeah. that, that, that it's, it's like pretty simple because that fourth dimension to me right now, it, m it means that there are multiple options of worlds, but you know, yeah, some of them are not fun. Fourth dimension doesn't mean it's all a beautiful one, yeah. you know, like there's, there's so many different timeline to, that you can go mm -hmm. into and they're more permanent. Fourth dimension can be scary because you can be locked in a permanent 
timeline for a long time and there's no loop out till till you go back down to another third and then die and resurrect again and come around you know that's what's weird is you know it could become a permanent timeline for a long Mm -hmm. fucking like infinite time until you break out of that one and you usually don't go up you usually have to go back down yeah you gotta break out you know like here recently so the people who follow my channel probably saw me me promoting somebody's business because um i don't know if you saw it or not you remember um, when Leah... I was sick for nine days and totally out. Well, Leah, Leah used to have this little business called Cheetah Crystals, where she inherited a bunch of crystals from her grandma, and she Ooh. was making crystal jewelry and shit on a website. And she would also make candles. Well, a friend of hers, that inspired a friend of hers to start making candles. So she started making these cool-ass candles and shit. And, you know, apparently she subscribed to High Vibe TV. She watches, you know, the Mastering the Matrix, watches all this stuff. And she's been wanting to learn how to manifest. So she went ahead and she got on the path. She went out and got a business license, made this badass website, and started filling it up with these fucking badass products and shit. Amazing candles. She hand makes soaps and shit. Damn. And I'm like, that's how you fucking do it. People say, I'm stuck here. No, you're not. Get on the path and start doing it. And guess what happened? As soon as she did that, and as soon as I promoted it, somebody reached out to her and said, hey, I'm about to open up a shop. I want to I wanna go into business with you and, and put all your products in my store. And doors start opening. That's right. the path. That's the way that it works. And you, I think she's probably the first person I've seen and. I don't know how long, who just fucking gets in and starts doing it. Start doing it. Doing something. Something. You're not stuck where you are. I know. Find something that lights your soul on fire and start doing it. I don't give a damn if you're making Ninja Turtles out of clay, you know? I mean, you should probably check it out. It's a cool little website called thewickwitch.com. Nice. Badass candles, Jack Skellington candles and shit. Shit that looks fucking professional, like something you'd see at a store. Right. Just because somebody said, you know what? I want to fucking manifest this and just... Got in and started doing it. Didn't come to me and, and ask me for a tarot reading about whether or not she should. You know, that, that digs up under my skin when people do that. They say, should I start a YouTube channel? Why are you asking me if you should? Fucking do it. Right. Should I write this book I've been wanting to write? Bro, <laughs> write the fucking book. Right. If it lights your soul on fire, start doing it. Now, is that going to be your big breakthrough? Maybe, maybe not. It doesn't matter. But the minute you start doing something, the minute you give yourself permission to write that book you've been wanting to write for the last five years, you're on the path officially. If you're doing it, you can tell yourself, I'm on the path. Now, don't get off the path. Stay on the path. Keep writing that book. If a new doorway of opportunity opens, take that doorway of opportunity. You see what I'm saying? This, yeah. That I'm stuck bullshit just that, that digs up under my skin when I hear people say that, you know? Yeah, because I think part of to get out of this weird, to me it really does feel like it's a dog and pony show, all the shit happening. <laughs> that uh, to get out of that, you have to, most people have to get out of, they have to, they have to fully find that they can be independent of creating their own way. Or if you're going to work, go work in something that actually is not some huge corporate fucking taken over fucking system, but something that actually where you have a voice in that you have something to contribute with because with Pluto and Aquarius, it's about interconnecting. It's about us all connecting our own grid of not only just spiritual grid, but commerce, lifestyle, all these things and getting out of the one that was created that was not to benefit people or even a system to where you go to a school and you're just basically churned out just like pink floyd says fucking you're just fucking put into the meat fucking grinder to oh, you what job are you gonna be i was supposed to be a forest ranger in that fucking stupid test you take in high school <laughs> A forest ranger? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it said I was supposed to be. <laughs> and, and I remember being at the time, and, and you know, when you're like 17, and I, because I graduated 17, I'm like, I guess I could see myself doing that. I mean, I camp my whole life, you know what I mean? But I just couldn't imagine. I mean, I was smoking weed at the time, so I was like, maybe it'd be cool. Yeah, I could smoke weed, just be a forest ranger up in the fucking <laughs> mountains. You know, that'd be fucking cool. I wonder if there's a timeline where that happens. Maybe. I always I always think of the timeline of me if I didn't awake, and I'm like, I, I for some reason, it always comes to me being like an insurance salesman or something. You know, like, I, I, I don't know why, but I'm always like, oh, hi, do you, do you need life insurance today? You know? 
Um, but, but like these systems are people systems we have to build like that friend of, of Leah's that you were just talking about, like, and how it can, the doors got to open. Mm-hmm. And when I think of circuitry or I think of electricity, it's like people got to get off this kind of like singular old school, like, you know, electrical spiritual grid. Like they got to have a circuitry where, to where they can connect to so many different places because the way you get away from a CBDC is, is through other people by the networks we're all creating, by the networks that we're all becoming as people. And, uh, and especially, you know, we have a full moon here in Leo that starts this week. It's the first one of our lives with Pluto and Aquarius. It hasn't happened since the 1770s, 1777 and 1778. And it's about expression. And I think that the big thing that people get, quote unquote, the illusion of being stuck on is, is they're afraid to express themselves. I think a lot of people are too afraid to express what they really oh, yeah. are, what they really yeah. like, what they want to be. Yeah. The fear of, what, especially Pluto and Aquarius, a lot of the fear is now going to be based upon what their friends think, what their family thinks. Like, and, 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 you know, that might sound crazy, but that's actually what holds a lot of people back. Yeah. Well, what if I yeah. quit my job? Will my husband still be with me? Will my this, will my friends still want to, uh, but, but that's going to ruin the, 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 we go drink on the weekends and da, 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 da. it's like, that's what's holding you back. Yeah. And that's the sad part to me because um, we're coming into a world where most people, and I think that's why the COVID thing worked. Most people were too afraid to express themselves and fucking stick their tongue out. and be like, fuck you bitches. Yeah. And that's the problem. You know, yeah. simple I mean, problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is sad because I think, I think, I don't know where this illusion People, well, people, people are under this idea that they're going to please everybody. They're so afraid to be disliked. And that's not what the age of Aquarius is all about. No. Aquarian energy, I don't give a fuck if you like me. Right. Fucking, you know, because no matter what you do, I tell people this all the time, it does not matter what you do, you're always going to have somebody talking shit about you. I know. Throwing judgment at you, trying to throw <laughs> shit at you, knock you off your path. So why, I don't, why would you waste so much energy trying to make everybody like you when you're never going to be able to do that? It's like you're never going to be able to drink all the water in the Atlantic Ocean. Why even try? Why would you even try to make everybody like you? You be you, unapologetically, authentically. Yes, people are going to hate you. Yes, people are going to make fun of you. But there's also going to be people who love you. Right. And the more you're being your true, authentic self, then the people who actually like you, that's your people. The people who don't like you, if you have anybody in your life right now, that you're afraid to express your mind because you're afraid they won't like you. That's not your people. If that's even a thought in your mind, I don't know. I want to do this thing, but I'm afraid of what my best friend would think. Well, then that's not your friend. If your friend wouldn't like you for expressing a certain opinion or doing something that lights your soul on fire, that's not your fucking friend. I did a reading for somebody the other day that said something about, Uh, I always had a passion for music and acting, but I was surrounded by unsupportive people. I was like, tough titty, tough fucking titty. You ain't always going to have fucking supportive people around you. Matter of fact, I would argue that the overwhelming majority of people who really want to reach for their passions lose most of their friends and family on that path. That's when you start seeing the the undercover snakes and the undercover haters come out the woodwork and get mad at you when you start doing good. You know, I mean, this might sound like a stupid example, but in the movie Jerry Maguire, that's the whole example, right? He fucking gets thrown out of being in the top fucking sports agency. And he's like, who's coming with me? And the one fucking girl, Renee Zellberger, is like, "I, I guess me. And then. The whole movie is about fucking that motherfucker. It's it's not glitz and glam when he thinks it's going to be. He has one fucking client who's not doing that great, and he's not doing that great. It, it fucking comes down to the wire on both of them, and then they fucking make it. You know what I mean? But also, the secret, I think, of the last 16 years of Pluto Capricorn has been... So if somebody... If you work in an office job, and, and, and let's say, you know, of course, social issues that's your girlfriend. And I saw that employee. He tried to fucking hit on her. And so that's sexual abuse, no problem backing up. But if 
it comes to this very greedy and selfish part of people in this world today. If it would be different, like, well, who's better at the job? You or her? You're going to fucking say yourself. Instead of being like, fuck you, I'm willing to lose my job because this is unfair. You told us that we were both able to work here. Most people are going to look after themselves Mm -hmm. to stay in the place they fucking hate. And most people just sit and watch people take it. Like, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to, I don't want to say anything. Mm, I don't want to, wait, I don't want to, I don't want to mess with all the COVID stuff. I'll put on the mask. I'll take the shot. I don't want to lose my job. The, the, the trick worked because now for a little enlightenment about the planet Uranus and the actual story of the Greek mythology of Uranus, when Kronos, Saturn, goes up to Uranus's world, which I would call 4D. He's sitting up there. He gets taken down by Kronos and he gets his nutsack cut off. This is actually the story. Oh, and that nutsack goes in the ocean and he gets exiled and banished. And then Saturn Kronos takes over and becomes ruler of control, takes control of the world, right? That's where we're at right now of people just watching other people because if you're too afraid of what will my friend think if I do it, what will people think? What will the world think? What will like my job think? What will my family think? What, what's going to happen by you not taking a stand in your life anywhere? You're just going to watch people take over. Mm-hmm. You're just going to watch. Cause that's what the, in the scene in the, in the pictures and the depictions of when Uranus gets exiled and his nut sacks cut off right and fucking that's where aquarius gets that banishment and having to like come back and do all this crazy shit in the world and he's the ruler of the skies most people like have to realize sky is the limit meaning there is no limit mm-hmm. like with pluto there it's like the boundaries of aquarius there are no boundaries like it is limitless you, we can go anywhere we want to go in the universe in our lives but most people don't realize that all the women, it was women that were surrounding Uranus, just sat and watched and went, oh, okay. I guess Kronos is now taken over. It was actually his own sisters, which is even weirder that he marries his sister. Kronos marries his own sister, Rhea. Rhea. But we're at a weird place now to me with people don't realize what's happening at this moment is that we've already switched so much into the new earth that the people stuck in the old system feel left behind yeah and it's not a christian way of looking at it like oh god (laughs) you did not follow christ so you're left behind yeah the feeling that people are having right now of why am i not feeling in where i want to be or it's not feeling connected or because that world's already taking off the ship's already taken off the destiny's already taken off and now you're Lucky if you're even on a caboose at this moment or running towards the caboose, but most people are still camped out with all the people down at the border in the camps, Mm -hmm. not getting on the fucking train to the new world. Like, you know, and, and that's to me as an astrologer, the sad part is that, um, there's not any more time left. I mean, this is the year that there is no more separation after that point. It's just, you're either in there or you're there. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of old beliefs that are going to have to be rearranged. It's going to be a slow transition. You know, it's going to be many years. Check this out. I heard not too long ago that just for the hell of it, somebody did a little survey where they were asking people a question and they 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 asked, I think, 100 people. They said, "Okay, imagine this. You have a choice between taking two two different jobs. Job A you're making $200,000 a year, but all of your coworkers are making $500,000 a year. Or job B, where you're making $100,000 a year, but all your coworkers are making 50,000 a year. You know, most people said they would rather have job B. I know. Most people, they don't they don't want to do better for themselves. They just don't want anybody else doing better than them. 
Right. And, and, uh, that way of thinking, that old capitalistic, I have to be the best, I have to be the best one, me, 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 that way of thinking is going to have to be unwired and reprogrammed. Because if, if I think I said this before, but if we woke up tomorrow and they redistributed the wealth evenly to every human being on the planet, that money would end up right back in the same hands in five years. Yeah. So that it does with the lotto. <laughs> well, that that way of thinking, that way of perceiving money and success and career and finance and commerce and trade and and all these things that the way we perceive it and the way we look at it and the way we look at our fellow human, you know, of, of just wanting to throw each other under the bus and compete with everybody and just climb to the top. That's that's got to go. That's not going to work in this new world that we're moving into, you know, no. But that's what's hard is, is it, the only place I see it is in the spiritual community where people want to work together and they want to, it's not even about competition. It's about like, oh yeah, I couldn't get through without using their product or with their cool thing they're coming out with or collabs. It's really weird to see this other, these other communities out there, which in commerce, especially, it's just like, you know. You can see some of that in construction maybe or whatever, like, oh, we need this, but then it's always about who gets the bigger bid on the job. I'm going to outbid that person. Da, 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 da. In the spiritual community, there is no bidding, like mm -hmm. wars. Because, and, and I think the spiritual community has been a great inspiration for people because the, there is no place that we want to reach that's like a traditional worldly kind of idealistic, like we're not trying to make some big, you know, fucking church and then be the leader of the church. Like nobody would want to go. That's <laughs> spiritual, right? Yeah. No, nobody that's actually spiritual does that. People think, Oh, I'm spiritual. I go to a church and I follow that. No, that's not spiritual. That's, that's following a cult. That's following an idea that, that only, only, only I want to give my energy away to a person and think that that person is the only person that I have to listen to in the world without having my own original ideas and thoughts. And especially when that person is telling me to follow this guideline. And if I don't, I'm going to hell Yeah. or, or I'm going to wherever. And I think that's, what's really weird at this moment too, is like the mixing of the, the spiritual old beliefs are ending, mm -hmm. but people are grabbing on tight. Oh, yeah. And as this old world's ending, guess what? They're grabbing on tighter to that. And that's where the fear to leave the system is so, to me, it, it, it's so basic bit shit. But <laughs> to me, I've really like kind of like been like, wow, I can't believe how many people did it. And I really thought in 2012, I was like, this shit's going to happen. And then I think, a lot of light workers out there right now have realized no who a lot of people want to like put the awakening experience as a Halloween costume on yeah. for one day or or go to Burning Man for a week but then come back to normal life and just play it <laughs> for a week. I mean that's why I've always laughed at Burning Man because it, most Burning Man people I know don't live it every day. Yeah. Like, and people ask me why I don't go. And I'm like, why? I mean, I do this every day. <laughs> yeah. To me, that's not a vacation. I already, like, I'm going to Conscious Life Expo, right? In two weeks. It's like, I'm going to be for four days there. If I can, like, I mean, like, and doing the work, you know? Like, it's, it's, it's so a vacation to me is not to go back to trying to do the same fucking thing all the time with people, with most people who don't do the work. Mm -hmm. They like to act it. They like to sleep on somebody else's couch and think, oh, yeah, I'm fucking doing the work. Yeah. But no. Well, I think also, too, because I, I really, because it's getting to a point now where, like, speaking of doing the work, like the work I've been doing for the past four years, it, it needs to reach another level. So I think whenever we talk about, whenever we say something like that, like doing the work, I can remember when I was new on my path, I would feel kind of overwhelmed with that. Like, man, all this work, where do I start? So the the people, the last few people that that are still kind of sitting on the fence here as the grand finale is about to pop off, where would you say is the best starting point to start doing the work, you know? I mean, I hate to say it, but it's like 
I, I'll, I'll use the matrix as an example. You got to take the red pill and you got to leave the life that you thought that, that, that if you were to leave it, you would die or you wouldn't be able to make it through, which is the biggest lie ever, which is usually a nine to five. Yeah. Because that's connected to the CBDC. Yeah. That's connected to all this shit, right? So it's like, whatever is your traditional thing that doesn't have anything to do with where you could be speaking spiritually about, because if you think about it at traditional nine to five, you can't express your feelings. Yeah. You can't walk in there and be like, you know what? I don't like this DEI bullshit. I don't like all this fucking equity bullshit. You're gone. You can't go in there and just be like, you know what? Fuck you. Mm. Nope. You're gone. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> like uh, an employee can tell me fuck you and I'm not going to fire him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you have to like, think about like what, you know, and most people, I think that's where the work is, is, is how do you leave these systems that are all encapsulated to follow the OSHA shit was so bullshit. And I don't have to people, some people get pissed that I was bringing it up because I fucking showed it. People would say, well, I was required to get a shot to keep my job. It's like, no, you weren't even in the OSHA documents. They say to employers, you, if somebody says they got it, you don't need the proof. Just write down that they got it and that's it. Like there was no anything in there that you had to do it the way that they told you to. Mm-hmm. So if you're at a job to where they ask that, you already know that's a, that, that's a sign that the dark is inf- infiltrated. Yeah. The universe, the last four years has been, let me expose where's infiltrated. Yeah. And if you are connected to any place in your life that's part of that, out. Which is, and again, one of my biggest predictions that I haven't put out yet on, on YouTube, but everybody on High Vibe knows this, that got my 2024 predictions. We're in the same astrology. Do you know what the first riot in America right after the Constitution was ratified was in America? Do you know what it was? I don't. I have no idea. This is going to blow your mind. And we're in the same astrology. It was against the doctors because they were going and digging the graves at night to do examinations and dissect bodies. So right after somebody would die and they got buried, the doctors would, New York would go and dig up the bodies, bring the dead relatives of people and start cutting them open for their own experiments. Hmm. And bunch of doctors died they stormed fucking in new york all the fucking doctors and fucking started to try and kill them all and did kill a bunch of them that's the first riot in the first major situation as america's a new country what do you think you're already seeing it right now the the first peer-reviewed paper about the nih finally saying that the shots kill young men with heart attacks all of the fucking shit that we're seeing Canada, I just showed you, right? The emergency fucking act was fucking illegal. What's about to happen? And I, I've, told, I've given this warning. If you're in healthcare and you're a doctor and you prescribed and you told somebody to get a vaccine, be, I'd, I'd quit your job. They'll stay in trial. I don't think they're going to stay in trial. I think, I think they're, they're, I think they're going to deal with the American public bum rushing them. I think some of them. I think that you're going to see every fucking doctor's office in the next year when all the shit has already been coming out, we're at that part to where we're just needing those little last things because people are in full denial because it's too scary. Yeah. Right. But when it becomes to where they have, when they, when it's in their face, the astrology loop back is people bum rushing all their fucking. So if you're a doctor, I would quit your job. You're going to be bum rush by all of your patients pissed off and you know there's going to be some that want to probably kill you Mm -hmm. if you're a nurse and you were fucking part of that shit and they knew oh i knew that fucking nurse is the one that went and got it or you work at cvs you work at walgreens and you're one of those people giving that shit out get the fuck out of your job now if you want to save your life also too did you know this the people who administered the shots they had a list that they had to keep very secret they weren't allowed to say they knew like, like they would be given a list and they, they all had serial numbers on the vaccines. And I forget what the exact numbers are, but let's say, for example, if the serial number started with a one, it was the actual COVID vaccine. If the serial number started with a two, it was just a regular flu shot. But if it started with a three, it was nothing but a saline shot. 
And the people who were administering the vaccines knew this. So there were actually some nurses out there who were who like had an attack of conscience and they gave people nothing but saline shots. So yeah, that that, that this is a whole big like universal test and there will be fucking people stand trial at some point. Some people will. And you know, like just it's it's like you said, it's going to be crazy. You're either going to get bum rushed, you're going to stand trial for genocide, something, something big is going to happen. And yeah, I, if, I would be looking for a new profession. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's where the work starts is like, if you're, if the tentacles of the COVID world reach to where anywhere in your life, anywhere, that means not even your job. Anywhere where there was any of that dark shit that took place uh, required to wear a mask, to lock down, anything like that, you quit. Now, that might scare the shit out of people, but that's your way out of the matrix because that's the only roads that the CBDC are going to go down. The same trail that was left by that is the same tentacles that are going to go down that road. So if everybody were to leave those positions, then it won't work. But guess what? 99% of people that are going to watch this that are in that do not have the balls or the ovaries to do it because they are not spiritual. They are too afraid and they are too fucking weak. That's what I mean by the trains already left the station and people are so fucking scared to upgrade their life that they're willing to stay and know the tentacles reach there. And to think that the octopus isn't going to come back yeah. <laughs> fucking put the tentacles there again. Woo. And, it, and it's so easy. It's, it's so, so e easy. Like, like here, I'll tell you what I did when I, when I said, you know what, I'm leaving this nine to five bullshit. I'm going to fucking become self-employed. I was not, well, I think I told you this last, uh, episode, but we didn't even have internet at my house yet. So I took this old crappy HP laptop to McDonald's to use their Wi-Fi, And I started typing in how to start an online business. I just started YouTubing and Googling. I want to know how do I sit at home on the internet and make money? It's so easy. You can go, and then this is just anybody out there that's wanting to know how to make money online. Here's how easy it is. Here's where you can start. Go find a, a product that you like. Well, I don't care if it's a hair care product or a damn health supplement or something like that. Go to their website, scroll down to the bottom, click apply to become an affiliate. You fill out the application, they will send you a link. So if anybody you can get to click that link and buy that product, you'll get a commission for it. Now what you do is you go learn how to start a Facebook page, not a profile, a page dedicated to this product. Now you wanna go research how to target an audience and run an ad. So you make your little ads, you can learn how to edit videos, you can even learn how to build a website dedicated to this product and advertise it. Yeah, you'll have to spend a little bit of money, but it's cheap to advertise on Facebook. Bam, there you go, online business. Somewhere to start, it's simple. Like, like when I first stepped into this, I hadn't touched a computer in five years. I knew nothing about the internet. All I know is Google. If I want to know something, I go to Google. So like, how to start an online business. Oh, there's this thing you can do called freelance digital marketing. And it's that simple. All you have to do is get uh, is apply to be an affiliate for any company. And they'll say, hell yeah, you can promote this shit. Everyone you sell will give you a little piece of it. Anybody, anybody can do this. And, and that's somewhere you can start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, and that, that, that's where the same media that sold you to be afraid of COVID is the same one telling everybody to be terrified of AI now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And to me, so everybody's so afraid of AI, yet they don't realize AI right now at this moment for something, for an example that you're doing, could take that quantum level, yeah. literally, right? Like, could literally build the site for you better than you could build it. Yeah. Make shit. it so much easier and automate the system and you could create your own GPT that actually would do ML machine learning and actually learn how to fucking do it, right? So people, right now, people are missing the boat on AI. They're missing the boat on fucking, they're still in the job with a tentacle. You're in the airline business, out, get out. Look at already what's happening. Like fucking, are you fucking gonna be, are you gonna, are you gonna be used again? If you're in the healthcare system, are you gonna be used again? 
Especially as they're fucking pop, propping up all the fucking WEF, but more importantly, the WHO shit. Are you really going to fucking let it happen? Because anybody who's not in that system, we don't want that shit. But if you're in that system, you're supplying the energy for them to even be able to do it. But if nobody, if everybody was to say, I'm done. So everybody's striking, right? Why everybody struck, struck and, oh yeah, I don't want to be part of this system anymore. Fucking at the car business, right? I need more money. Why is the whole healthcare system right now doing a strike like, no WHO. Or we won't be nurses. We won't be doctors. Then they won't bum rush you. This is how the whole new world's going to change. Anybody in, in airlines, we're never going to allow masks or us to be this or anything. And, and don't be doing shit to any of our fucking customers. Don't be treating them and don't be forcing them to do things or denying their service or denying us to fly to countries or do any of this bullshit. Or we're all not flying. All the pilots, all the shit. Da, 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 da. That's the only way this is going to change. So the, the, the work to me in the Matrix to change the Matrix is to not follow the fucking system and be a swarm just like in Matrix 4 and be like swarm mode, lockdown. Boom! If you've watched that movie, you know that if you are one of the people in that system, you're just the swarm that's laying in bed and when fucking Neo and Trinity and are running by, they've already activated you and you jump out the window and become a bomb and try and fall on top of them. That's what this has been about. So it's like, I, I know that might sound so controversial, but to be honest with you, it's the most logical, most basic, easiest shit that can actually happen. But most people don't have the guts. They are so afraid to even walk out their door and say what they want to say, let alone get together with others. And uh, you, you're willing to get together with others for money for yourself. But what about for all the humanity? What about for all these fucking crazy things happening? You're just going to still sit there and be the fucking office fucking girl at the doctor's office and be like on your phone, fucking on Tinder, waiting for the next time they're going to get boned down <laughs> to get left. Yeah. Yeah, man. So we, we got to be able to get people to actually rise up. That's the thing. That, that's, that's the whole thing. Everybody has to be able to rise up. Well, somebody said, throw out the government. The, we are the government. You throw yourself out of the government. You don't, we don't, you don't take down a government by going after it. Yeah. You remove everybody from it. Mm -hmm. People are fucking retarded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if Stephen Hawking's can fucking go out to Epstein Island and get midgets. Okay. And have them make crazy ideas on chalkboards and get off on that shit. You can fucking do this shit. You know how to get people to do it, right? Take their money away. When people, I wake, mean, and that's, but that's the problem. That'll be too late. When people wake up and their bank account says zero, they're going to be pissed off. That's when people are really going to start flipping out and throwing a fit. And, you know, I, I, it's going to happen to some people. How many? I don't know. I have no idea. I have a lockbox full of gold and silver just in case. I don't know. But that's going to happen to some people. There's going to be some people who have been working their corporate job for 30, 40 years. They have hundreds of thousands of dollars tucked away in the bank, fucking a million dollars in their 401k or whatever, and they're going to wake up and it's all going to be gone. And they're going to flip yeah, their fucking lid. That's going to be, I think, the very difficult part. Yeah. But I think that's when it becomes too late to avoid that. I feel like, you know, Aquarius is about detachment then connection so it's like people have to detach from they don't realize that the system is connected because the government's tentacles are in most people's jobs unless you're truly a fucking gangster business where it's just on the local level and then you're you're in a local level to where like here in huntington beach there is not allowed to be a vaccine mandate it's the only city in america right there's no vaccine mandate here and no mask mandate allowed here? Yeah, Huntington Beach. We passed that like six, four months ago. Huh. And then plus when that happened in the, during the last four years, they said we were the only city that revolted in the world right away. Hmm. Right? So, and you can still go look that up. Fucking Huntington Beach, COVID fucking protest, right? Like we didn't follow one thing. And then the governor tried to fucking take us out. And so that's why you live here at the studio. No, I've been here prior. I've been here. My, the universe has always guided me to this place since I was 19. Oh, wow. So people have to learn to be guided yeah. to where to go instead of following what, you know, they think they need to do to survive that really has a tentacle that 
reached. Meaning if your business or the company you work for through any protocol of the COVID thing, get out. That means it's a, that means it's part of the tentacle. And that's a simple way to do it. But most people like you kind of have to describe it in so many ways. So if you're like, yeah, if you, if you work at Ulta and you're a beauty girl and they wanted you to wear a mask, the tentacles in there, the tentacle. And that's the problem is all these companies have sold themselves out lobbyists, the whole nine into these systems that get fed these fake fiat currency and that are part of the CBDC that are going to trap you. So if you, if everybody were to quit all their jobs and they had nobody to work for it, there would be no CBDC. Mm -hmm. But again, nobody's going to hear this and do it. I think eventually, like I said, I, I still hold the very firm belief that it's going to be very scary. It's going to be fucked up for some people, not all people. But for quite a few people, they're going to go through the fucking scare of their life. It's going to be a near-death experience for... Yeah, the tentacle's going to wrap around their fucking neck. Yeah, and, and it's... But, and, and no, there will be some people who are left behind and do take the lower timeline. But for a lot of the people, they're going to go through the scare of their fucking life before they see what's really been happening. And we'll be all right. We'll be good. We'll, I think me and you will float through it, you know? Well, I think anybody who where the tentacle couldn't come in is fine. But that, what's scary is that is like 1%. Yeah. Right? Like, like the tentacle reached everywhere is my point, except the spiritual community. Mm -hmm. It hit the churches. It hit the religions. It hit all them. The tentacle's there. Hmm. Oh, you can't come in. You need a social distance. You need to wear a mask. We can't have this many things. We're going to live stream the mass. <laughs> like my buddy, Eric, I, he does don't trip. We, we did don't trip in 2020. We, this motherfucker threw a fucking huge fucking spiritual fucking festival in the middle of fucking COVID. And of course it was like, I don't know, 200 of us. And we had the best time of our lives. And I, I, I think I had never felt more peace in my life because I, I was like, I could, but it was kind of sad because I knew the whole world was just in their house while we were throwing the best time. And even the cops came multiple times and they literally were just like, I mean, you guys are here alone. There's nobody around, but 10 miles away, they can hear you. <laughs> so can you guys turn it down a little bit? And, and it's called don't trip because like, so the best, the best idea in life is to not trip. Like you're really tripping out about staying at a job where there's a corporate tentacle in there right now. Why don't you stop tripping and leave that? The yeah. trip out is the fact that the tentacles there, it might look like it just slipped away back behind the coral reef. No, it's just getting rearmored up right now. Oh, yeah, they're afraid to take that leap. You know, of faith. and that's the, that's the, uh, that's the it's like it's like scar has taken over pride rock yeah and all the hyenas are out yeah you really think that the hyenas are just gonna be nice and oh they ate a bunch of the food and there's no more food so they're gonna go away they're not gonna go away and the hyenas are gonna come back and they're going to go hey, hey, at your job. Well, if you want to keep this job, you need to go on this payroll. Uh-oh. See, that's where people are going to start thinking like, wait a sec. So if you're on a paycheck and that tentacle paycheck was connected to, you need to wear a mask. You need to get a shot. You need to follow this new protocol. That means the tentacle reached the higher ups there that were stupid and dark enough to do it. And most people are not going to admit and they're going to take, they're going to fucking take it. Oh, okay. This is just a new way of money. And at that point, there is no manifestation. You've lost your free manifestation ticket. Now you're just waiting on the sun to fry out the whole electrical grid. But with that, 
happens the worst situations of all time. And that the estimates are 90% of the people dying. So if we don't want that to happen, it's pretty easy. Can we please, instead of everybody trying to fight for their job, leave it? Yeah. They're afraid to make that leap of faith, you know, like leave it and do what? What am I supposed to do? We'll start doing it now. See, we've been so conditioned for so many years to be looking. F- See, we, we work nine to five, five days a week. And then those two days off, people just want to lay around and do nothing. No, 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 no. Every ounce of your spare time should be dedicated to getting away from that job. You have two days off a week. If I was stuck in a nine to five job right now, I would be spending every spare moment of my time in my computer screen, figuring out how to start my own business. You know, I I mean, Uh, exactly. Even, even like on my days off or not on my days off, even if it's not a day off, once I get off work, I'm going straight home and I'm getting on the computer and I'm figuring out, I'm working on my business. I'm building my business. I'm building my website or fuck. Like you said, with AI, now you got the goddamn computer will do it for you. I know what I had AI back then when I very first started becoming self-employed, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. (laughs) I'd be doing something totally different. So I'm glad I didn't have it back then. But, but I mean, you start now, start doing it now. You, if you want to get away from that shit, Start right. doing it now, you know, like, and it's just, I don't know. Oh, no, I'll do it later. I'll do it. So no, no, later, later is going to be too late here soon. It's going to be beyond late. And I think that's, that's the, the kind of, you know, warning shot that's been named. Um, so I just put into AI for people. It's that easy in life. I put, I work a job I hate. What would you recommend as businesses I can create because I love lights and makeup? I don't know. I was, we were talking. If you love lights and makeup, you might consider creating a business that combines these interests in a unique way. Here are a few ideas. Makeup and lighting consultory. Offer personalized services to clients looking to enhance their appearance with various lighting conditions. Custom vanity studios. Design and sell custom vanity mirrors and lighting uh, setups tailored to makeup artists, salons, and beauty enthusiasts. You could offer a range of products for portable, compact mirrors. Beauty, there's so many. There's eight jobs that I gave. Event makeup services, makeup and lighting workshops, makeup lighting equipment. When considering these options, think about what aligns best with your skills, resources, and the market demand in your area. Starting a business can be a fulfilling way to turn your passions into a profession, conducting market analysis, creating a solid business plan, which it, this will do for you all yeah. of that too. On your phone, it did it in faster than I could think. The universe has offered us the greatest gift and most people won't take it. Mm -hmm. And when I see that and I look at the world today and I hear all the complaints, I literally am just like, well, that that's, I mean, it, it has nothing to do with what the universe, everybody thinks the universe is fucking us. The opposites happened. The universe has offered us everything. Yeah. And people are denied. It's like the four of cups. Like, no, that's, I mean, that's, ex- you know? that's exactly why I just said, if they redistributed the wealth overnight tonight, the money would end up back in the same hands tomorrow uh, in five years, because it's what you do with it. People don't understand. It's not more money that you need. It's your frequency that you need to reprogram. It's your perception that you need to reprogram. More money is not going to fix your problem. Ask anybody who's ever won the fucking lottery. They end up bankrupt in five years. That's not what it is that you need. Like open AI, you have that app right there on your phone. Everybody has one of these things in their pocket. Anybody can get chat GPT. What are most people going to use it for? Start a business? No. To, to, to tell it to make stupid little funny pictures so that they can share it on social media. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the perception of humans. Is that, does that make sense? Uh, I, and trust me, I understand. Somebody in the comments just said, well, you can't, I can't leave my job because they, they offer me health insurance and I have bad health issues. It's like, I'm sorry to say, but that's like saying, well, the mafia is the one that pays for my health insurance. It's like, so I'm going to keep working for the mafia. It's like, <laughs> okay. So like it's, it's so hard to get health insurance. So I'm going to, Start a business. I'm gonna I mean, like, start a business. Here's what you say. I know. <laughs> you say, okay, well, you know what? That's cool. 
in six months, I'm going to be able to wipe my ass with the amount of money it would take I know. to pay for this health insurance. Like people's paradigms, they don't understand the paradigm in which they think. They can't even imagine sitting at home on the internet making enough money to pay for that health insurance and not even fucking notice that a dime has been taken out of their I account know. each month. Like they, 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 it's the paradigm. It's your paradigm in which you believe. If you believe that you have to have that job for your health insurance, then you're absolutely fucking right. And that's, that's what you believe. But if you believe, no, nah, you know what? It's possible that within the next six months to a year, I could be sitting at home working on the internet making $300,000 a year. I buy my own goddamn health insurance. Right. I mean, it's, it's what you believe. Whatever you choose to believe, the universe has no choice but to hand you evidence that supports it. So the only thing a belief is, is a thought that you think over and over and over until it burns itself into your subconscious mind. That's what a belief is. So what you need to start doing is start working on your beliefs. Makes sense? It makes a lot of sense because it also is a great example of showing, well, I have to work this so I can get my CBDC. Yeah. Just replace health insurance now with the new vaccine that I have to have in order to get my money too. Yeah. That I have to use a biometrics because that's, that's what the Dutch queen just said, that her system that she's rolling out to WEF of biometric digital IDs also to get on the internet that's what Nikki Haley wants. Fuck Nikki Haley. Okay, Nikki Haley needs to fucking go. She needs to get the fuck off. Yeah. Anybody supporting Nikki Haley needs to fucking yeah. go take a couple fucking Pfizer shots. Like, but that's the idea is a biometric digital ID. So that means you didn't get your vax. They'll be able to tell from your biometrics that they don't trace the vax in you because that's how well they put this thing out. You can trace the vax in somebody through the IgGs and the IgHs and all that shit of understanding. Okay. So if I can, oh, oh, you didn't get your shot. So you don't get your money. That's the same thing. I'm like, well, I get my health insurance for my work. So I need to be able to fucking get my health insurance. It's like, what do you mean? Like when you're, that's what's kind of shitty about the world that we live in until we get to well, I think the Texas, you know, governor just kind of exposed it in a weird way, saying like the compact between the United States and the states has been breached, right? Like that idea of the corporate United States of America, right? Like as a corporation, did they, so, so here's a good question for people. When they forced the shots on Americans, did the CEOs have to take the shot? No, because they're not on the payroll. A smart CEO is not on the payroll. They, they, they have their own, right? Like when you're, when you're the controller of the corporation, it was after the employees. OSHA was after the employees. It wasn't after the owners. It wasn't after the corporation heads of the fucking corporation, any of the people in the fucking, if they're on the board or not. So the board members didn't have to take the shot. The owners didn't have to take the shot, but the employees did. So you already are living in a fucking slave society at this moment. If you have a job getting a paycheck and they wanted you to do that, or you're doing it for your health insurance because the CEOs, the heads up, the boards, no, nobody has to take that shit. So good example, right? They picked it for companies with a hundred employees or more. Now that's in the data from Ed Dowd of how many people are dying is because all the insurance companies, so not health insurance, but life insurance companies have gone through the roof since the shot came out because everybody that got it, we know for sure got it from that place to keep their job. The most people who have died of excess deaths are people who work nine to five corporate jobs who had to get the shot. Mm -hmm. And it's in the life insurance data of how many people have died. They've never seen it ever before in history. So another good example of maybe, maybe having that idea and that belief system that you just said, right in brain and in, in just having that in there is if everything's fourth dimensional now, even a thought can become a reality that goes so far now yep. that you're in a sliders episode where you don't even know how to get back to where you thought reality was. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the part that we're at is I'm stuck. I can't change it. And, and the excuses are the, are, are that, I hate to use this person as an example, but it's a good learning lesson. It's like, that's the reason to stay in a horrible job is fucking the health insurance. Yeah. You know how easy it is to go buy health insurance. 
It's fucking so simple. Yeah. It's like car insurance. There's so many companies. I just... <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I don't know what to say. It's, it's kind of sad. It's, it's scary, but I mean, and that, that's another system that is going to be going bye-bye in the next few years. Is the yeah. whole Food and Drug Administration and Big Pharma, all that's going bye-bye. That's probably going to be a little bit later on down the line. Well, I mean, how does the song go that you can't get out of your head today? Oh, good God, man. Dude, that... I think was, we should talk about this theory, though. That was we the have. most vile fucking shit I've ever seen in my life. Apparently, what is it now? Canada? It's in is, Canada, yeah. Is promoting this assisted suicide program. Yep. And they're targeting kids. Yep. So they had this little Bert and Ernie looking cartoon. It's okay to pass away today. Singing it to little kids. Like, Terminally ill kids and showing RIP tombstones with happy faces with halos around it. Showing the guy who's on the guitar when he goes, it's okay to die. We all die. And if they make fun of you, remind them that we all die. And then the kid spitting up blood and it's a happy face in his fucking shit. And it just shows all these dead, like these half dead kids being like, you know, it's better to just die. And then showing him, it will. It won't hurt anymore. All those pills you have to take and radiation and all that shit. And then he fucking squirts the fucking thing, and then he injects the kid, and then the fucking kid dies. And then he has another kid pick up the the dead kid's hand and goes, "He's dead! Yay!" Yeah, this, this is a legit Google ad. Yeah, it's a legit Google ad. Yeah, it's fucking insane. And then the one for the adults. I know it, that was it, the crazy it one. Looked too. Like a fucking, it looked like a fucking uh, Valtrex commercial, you know, for herpes medication I or know. something like that. Have you been diagnosed with depression and you can't, you know, overcome it or whatever, whatever? Are you a slave to these medications and you just can't get over your depression? Well, here's the solution. And wh what did they say? We can't change the past, but we can prevent the future. Yeah, we can prevent the future of your depression and your hate of your life and the pain of depression that you go through, it's just not worth going through life anymore, that we'll take it the pain away. And it shows the shot, and it shows him and his family, and he's at the dinner table, and then they lay him down, they take his glasses off, and they have his whole family dressed up, and shoot him up, and he dies right there. And they're all and it, walking along the beach, yep. and smiling and happy like it's a Valtrex commercial. It's a brand new day. <laughs> I know. In the fuck? It's the same company, too. They, that was really? the adult version, and then the kid version is that cartoon with the weird fucking kids and the fucking... I just... Uh, when you showed me that, I'm... I, like... And then we went to the company's website. It's not like it's just a, a Twitter video. It's an actual website in Canada because they've already, and I saw one six months ago where it was a, like a young 20 year old who's like, I don't want to live anymore. I'm having depression and all that. And they, there's another company who's like, you can, it's a little bit more money. And it was funny because they're like, you have to get this by prescription. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Okay. Like, I'm gonna, can I have a prescription to die? Thank you. Um, fucking thank you. Can you just write what, what is the fucking drug code that the fucking pharmacist has to get on that one? Like, yeah, I'll have one shot of death, please. Man. But fucking they showed that the, for, for more money in Canada, they'll make it the best last day of your life. So they get a whole, it's like a wedding thing. Like we'll make it like you and your girlfriends will get you an Airbnb. So this one girl had it. And this is a real story. She had an idea. She wanted to be by the beach. So they took her all the way to the West coast of Canada. They got it by fucking Vancouver. They got her a big Airbnb with her friends by the woods, by the ocean. She got to spend the day. They had like, you know, tiki lights and shit above it. They had a nice little dinner in the summer. And then they gave her her shot and she died with their girlfriends outside in the nature. But the, so they're going to make you and have such a good time. You're probably not going to want to die then. So what the fuck? What if it, I, like, oh my God, no, actually life is really fucking cool. I'm good. You know, like, I mean, they're trying to make it look like everybody's about to go do a fucking like, you know, an LSD ceremony, but instead we're all going to just watch you fucking juice yourself up to death. It's really weird. But what I told you, I think is going to happen with all the turbo cancers coming out and shit. We're already seeing whether it's, Antibiotics are all in China, 99%, right? And look at what's happening. 
So they're not, they're, we're not going to have medications. They're already seeing medication shortages for heart meds, blood pressure, Adderall, you name it, right? So what's going to happen? All these turbo cancers are happening. All, all these people who took the shot, what are they going to offer? What do all these shot companies have left to offer? Nobody trusts the shots. But if you knew you can get a shot and you have a terminally ill cancer and there's no more radiation left, there's no more fucking options except for just a quick out. People are just be like, here, I'll take out. Depopulation, man. And that's what I don't think people are realizing right now is like, well, I'm doing it for my health insurance. Well, your health insurance is saying for the person who has a job at the health insurance that you're not viable on the planet anymore. We're not, we can't pay you that much anymore, but I need all these things. Well, here's an easy out. Yeah. That's fucked up how like real that is. That's I know. just insane. That sitting there watching that, that opened up a door in my mind to a whole new paradigm that I, I should it, I shouldn't be surprised because I know I say a lot that nothing surprises me anymore. That got me. That surprised me. I was like, what the <laughs> actual fuck? Like, dude, holy shit. But I mean See, we're, <laughs> we're going to be moving into a world, though, in the next 10 years where all the pills and the shots and the medicines and the surgeries and all this horse shit is going to go bye-bye. And, you know. It's, but, but after, I, I already know you're going to go with this. After, before they fucking come out with the technology that's already out there. Okay. Before the med bed shit. You know what they're going to do? Make it look like there's nothing, and all that's left is a terminally to, to cancel your life shot left. Yeah, there's no more medicines left. There's no more. You know, all the doctors got bum rushed because of fucking what happened. Mm -hmm. All the nurses, fucking everybody, fucking got bum rushed, and they're all fucking. Oh, I was never that. The girls are wearing mustaches. I'm trans now. What do you mean? <laughs> I was never a nurse, right? So fucking. Yeah. Then what's gonna happen is the only thing left is this fucking shot to take your pain away. Yeah. And then once all those shots have been given and most people took it and they wanted off this reality, then, oh, what do you mean? There were these med beds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, not only that, too, but, and well, and, well, I was going to go there. Here, here's where I'm really going, though. And I don't remember if I talked about this in an episode or not, but there was a story, I don't remember how long ago this happened, 10 or 15 years ago, where there was this man and wife and the woman had terminally ill cancer. And she was like about to go and she went into the doctor and the results came back real negative. And the doctor told the husband and she, she, she might have two months left maybe. So the husband grabbed the doctor and slammed him up against the wall and said, don't you say a fucking word to her. And he's like, okay, fuck. So the husband came in smiling, saying, baby, you're going to do great. You're fucking healing. You're healing right. so fast. It's, you're going to make a full recovery. Everything's good. And she healed. Yep. Poof. Disappeared. That is what we're going to be tapping into in the future. Yes, the technologies. That, that is an assistance process. But, you know, that can't fix you for you. Because if they put you in a med bed right now and heal everything that's going wrong in your body, but your mind is fucked up, you're going to make yourself sick all over again. So, you know, in med school, I don't know if they changed this or not, but the last I heard, uh, and I may be a little off on this, but the last I heard, I'm 95% sure they spend a half a day talking about the placebo effect through all of med school, a half a day. When that's the most important fucking thing that any of us could wrap our minds around is the yep. placebo effect. They talk about it for a half a day. And how, how long does a doctor go to school? At least eight years? You know, a half a day in eight years. I mean, this might be very controversial as I'm about to light up a smoke. <laughs> but until they started telling people that smoking was bad... <laughs> <laughs> there was no off the chart in history of all these people dying of lung cancer and all these right it wasn't like smoking's been around longer than fucking soda yeah longer than most everything that there is literally in your life that you see today yeah so yeah i think that's the that's the hilarious part is like you ask a real smoker, like they've heard from everybody around them in their life too. Like, why do you still smoke? 
And no, but none of us give a reason. We just are like, I don't know, I enjoy it. Thanks. You know, and walk away from it. People who smoke don't think about that shit. I'm not thinking about, am I going to die from smoking a cigarette? Some people do. <clears throat> well, and that's usually what happens though. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they, like mm-hmm. if, if you're doing anything in life and think, oh, I'm going to die doing this. Well, that's what you probably are. Yeah. I mean, like it's pretty simple, mm-hmm. but I think, I think that's, that's the, the irony though, is I, and I, and I use this one all the time. Like why in the cars that are $200,000 and more, and there's only a couple left that even do it. Why do the only cars that still have ashtrays are for the people that are millionaires or more? Why is that? And why do the poorest people drive the cars that have no ashtrays, no cigarette lighters, nothing? Mm. Why is that? Why in a new fucking, and, and it's weird. It's Mercedes Benz and only the S class, right? The limos are Maybox or their highest AMG or a fucking Bentley or a Rolls Royce or right. You can get a, There's ashtrays in them. But why in every Hyundai, Kia, well, that's so funny about Kias. Like, did you see that whole thing about how on the internet, like anybody who has a Kia from 2021 and under, it's all on TikTok. You just take a fucking screwdriver and just go in there and fucking start the engine, right? So that's why all these people are breaking into fucking Kias and fucking shit. It's hilarious. (laughs) What did you expect? The car's from fucking Korea. (laughs) Do you remember Daewoo? They didn't last that long. Yeah. I actually, I had to sell a day. It was a used car sale in the year that they went out of business and that we couldn't get the parts to help the person with more shit. I'm like, it's as is. I need a car. I'm like, okay. Yeah. But like that, you know, it's like, and like that, that's where people just don't think is like, oh man, the med, like to the med bed, to the placebo effect. I mean, to where people's attention is right now, uh, the way that it's being all funneled in the internet and to algorithms and to where things are at to scare them, to not manifest the life. And it doesn't matter what side you're on. You could be on the right or the left. It's still this like, well, so if you're on the left, it's like, don't go to, don't go to Florida. If you're on the right, don't go to California. Two butt cheeks on the same. Like You know what I mean? (laughs) But yeah, that's, that's the world that we're moving into though. I mean, and that's what we have to, well, this is what keeps me awake at night. How do I get people to understand that? That's what keeps me awake at night. That's why I have to take sleeping medicine. I have to take, I have to take GABA, melatonin, and eat like three or four sleepy gummies at night. Because if I don't, I'm laying awake. Like how the fuck do I explain this shit? How the fuck do I get the population to understand how powerful they are? Like it literally keeps me up at night and that, that like, it's like this burden of responsibility that's on me that I don't know where it came from. I don't know why I feel like I have the weight of the world on my shoulders. Like, like, you know, I have hundreds of thousands of people that hear my voice. How do I say that one thing that fucking makes the light come on? So they understand how powerful Mm -hmm. their goddamn mind is, you know, is that, is that, do you ever get that at all? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm sure you talk about it with Leah. I talk about it with Sophia, but she always gives me the answers that are always so powerful. Always just like, babe, people will, they'll learn. I'm always like, yeah, I guess you're right. And then I fall asleep. I'm like, uh. <laughs> because I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you know, like, and, that, and that's, what's hard. I think that I was you for years, especially people know on the, on my YouTube, I was fucking screaming into 2019 like nobody wants to talk about fucking plagues and they're gonna come through with this shit and they're gonna fucking force you to do shit i am screaming it no nope. everybody was like nothing's happening and i'm like you watch the second we start 2020 january 12th that's the day they fucking came out and said oh there's a coronavirus right and so i'm like okay so the astrology is right and it's always been right but that, that's the hard part is that you know in this new aquarian moment it's going to be uh, what do people know how to express themselves and live their true happiness in their heart and connect and, and do things with people and connect with where they, the people they want to go connect with, not because they're forced to by the job that they have to accept to keep their health insurance. <laughs> that is not Aquarian at all. You know, it reminds me of hot topic. If I were to pick a corporate company, it's like you go in there, they, they sell shit that most people won't wear. But people find a way to express themselves with shit like that. I used to go into Hot Topic, 
I fucking loved that store because it was the only place that offered something. Of, it wasn't the same old shit. Like to me, the world is gap. Never walked into a gap, looked in it and already knew never going to go into that shit. You want to talk about the most ding, bing, boring, lazy, fucking ugly person, boringest thing in the universe, trying to be like everybody else. Gap. <laughs> I just knew. I did. Well, let's see. I'm never gonna walk into a Gap. Whoever wears Gap is a fucking tentacle. Yeah. Wrap the tentacle around me more. And that's that's. Like, I mean, I mean, I think you can understand. You like rock music. I mean, I'm I'm definitely a metal person. And being in a metal or being a raver it, it, my whole life, like I, you know, like, you know, being shunned upon, I can't believe you listen to that devil music. Like that was rave music. And then it was like metal is devil music. I'm like, what the fuck? But being able to fucking express yourself, you're a singer and I've watched you, you know how to express it and you're singing in your soul. And, that, and that's like, to me, it's like people have removed themselves from that. I think music's going to save the world, to be honest with you. Because that's the way to express yourself. Most people are still afraid to dance on a dance floor. Most people are afraid to sing like how you sing or to create a song like you create. Like, yeah, yeah. that's why we say we got to record your fucking songs. I know that they're about hard shit. Yeah, yeah. But it's the fact that you can express yourself is what is so beautiful in life, you yeah. know? Well, I mean, with music, though, that kind of goes down a different rabbit hole because, and I wish I remembered the details on this because I remember studying up on this about a week or two ago and i was like i want to remember that because i want to talk about that on the podcast but i forget the actual numbers but back in like the early 1900s when like the rockefellers and whatnot took over the music industry they intentionally took music down to a lower frequency that programs your mind into a state of chaos yeah i think 432 hertz is the, is the good one yeah is the frequency music yeah. should be at and they dropped it down to like 419. So, so they dropped it down just a little bit, just enough so that the way it interacts with your brain waves puts you in a state of chaos. And people don't even realize it. Yeah, and they tweaked it the most in hip hop. Yeah, yeah. They you know, hip hop to match yeah, your heartbeat. Yeah, and, and, and that, that's where, if you think of it, if you listen, listen to most hip hop or what you hear on the radio, well, there's no radio anymore, but whatever you hear on the fucking, whatever you think is popping, it's not popping. If anything, it's popping your spiritual eardrums. Yeah. And that, 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 that's where, you know, most people don't know how to express themselves. Like, especially I think being a DJ is a very, um, people look at it like we don't do anything, but it's quite the opposite. We're doing a lot, but at the same time, we're the ones that have to hear. Can, I don't know this song, but can you play this? You're ruining the whole vibe of letting the dance floor go with the flow right of whatever's happening and that's like the number one sign like people like people don't realize with orchestras and 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 how you would go you would not know if mozart whatever the composer's creating and it would be a whole it's not one song you know what i mean and then it ends and then the next song mm -hmm. right like music forever has been like if, if you go to a real band they're gonna fucking play your song and keep they're gonna take that fucking guitar solo and go longer yeah. They're going to take, and they're going to blend it into the next song. And you know, that's a real fucking, that's how music's supposed to be in that the frequencies are supposed to keep expanding and keep going into all these unique expression places. But people have been locked into this idea of like, I need to know the song and I need to know the words to the song. And I, if, if I haven't heard it or my friends aren't into it, or it's not looking like it's popular, then I'm not going to be into yeah. it. Yeah. And that's, and that, that, that's, that's already been the main trap yeah. for a long time. That's where it gets so frustrating because, you know, they, and then I saw a video not too long ago where Michael Jackson was even saying, it's like a mantra when you keep repeating that chorus yeah. over and over and over. I've been saying that. You, you know, just, and, you already know the song to the death kid fucking commercial. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fucking, I don't remember it, but you know it. Yeah. And, and they even did, they even proved scientifically. And I can remember this back when I used to play in a band when you know it, we were all pretty talented musicians and we would link up like we could just look at each other and, and yeah. have, send a telepathic download to each other i could look back at the drummer and he could nod at me and i already know what he's saying and i always thought it was kind of weird but i thought it was just me <clears throat> they proved they've already proven that they they linked heart monitors to band members who are playing music 
when a band starts playing music and they start playing together, their heartbeats sync yeah. and match up. Their brain waves link up. They link up telepathically whenever they get into that flow. They get into the flow state. You know what I'm saying? So, And why do you think they got rid of bands on the radio? Have you yeah. noticed it's all single artists now? There's no more bands. Yeah. They don't want that there's something about a band coming together and blowing people's minds into create original art and human music that moves people. I'm sorry, but Taylor Swift, I don't even know what her music is, but I already know it ain't moving. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> I already know it ain't moving people. Yeah. I already know it's the zombie chant of the background mm. when the zombies happen. But like that, like that's the thing is like, it's all about these individual artists now. And then it's all fucking just, like, I'm going to be honest, I'm a DJ and I'm a producer. It's pretty easy. These beats are fucking all just done off. You just go buy packs of fucking music samples and fucking put it together nice and fucking you can make a beat. Yeah, an auto-tune. An auto-tune and fucking that's what people are. Most people are listening to auto-tune. Yeah. And, and that, that, you know, I mean, these are the mics that Michael Jackson sung on or most artists sing on right here. This is it. And then everybody uses them for podcasts, but most people need to, they'll buy some shitty thing and then go, Oh, I'm going to auto tune myself. Yeah. <laughs> or if the worst is like, I can't even believe like I'll laugh at Sophia. I'm like, I can't believe some dude just thought he was going to be super cool. And he fucking auto tuned his voice. And, and I don't even understand this new generation of like hip hop where it's like, not even like hard, but it's like, it's like all like they make their voices sound all weird yeah. and shit and they don't even sing. And it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm fucking, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, I was, I was at our house smoking fat and all yeah. like, what, like what? Like that, that's, that's where we're at. The story, but but you know what you listen to is a lot. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think that you know the fact though is the expression as a DJ to see people dance. That's why I moved to just doing more spiritual. I got out of the club club scene and went back to just doing more spiritual festivals and spiritual events because I'm like I can't deal with these people who just want to stand around and look at me like they're zombies at a fucking like $2 million sound system and fucking, you know, a thousand people and everybody's standing around. And there's like the 25 people in the middle that actually will dance. Like what the fuck's happening? It's so weird. Unless I play a song they know. That's why I hated playing the big, big clubs. Cause I always, you know, you, as a DJ, you play for the audience. So it's like, all right, obviously these people don't want to be moved by some badass shit. They want to hear something that they know. Yeah. The question is how do you, you know, know it? <clears throat> That's the question. Why do you know this song? Because they said, this is the song you are going to listen to and you are going to like it. And all the sheep said, okay. You know, like that new song. Oh my God, I can't stand. What's that? What's that one song? Something about make me wet, make me water or some shit. Like I have that. no idea. Dude, they <laughs> just, they play it. I'll get on, I'll get in my truck and that song will be playing and I'll skip to the next fucking station on Sirius XM that song is playing I get out go into the store come back out get in my truck that song is playing they choose what song you know we're gonna blast this all over every radio station we're gonna get the right influencer to do a stupid little kooky dance to it on their goddamn fucking TikTok video and all the little sheepy kids, oh, I love that song. DJ, play this song. My favorite influencer was doing a kooky dance to it on TikTok. It's my favorite song now. It's just the same thing with this stupid Stanley Cup bullshit. Have you seen that? I mean, I, I saw stuff and I didn't understand. It's like a fucking coffee mug it's or a something. Cup for 50 fucking dollars for a goddamn fucking thermal cup thing like this. My daughter wants one so bad, you know, and I had to set my daughter down and talk to her. I'm like, look. Don't just do what everybody around you is doing. You know, her mom's going to get her. Fucking Leah said, no, I'm not buying you that fucking $50 cup. She said, I'll get you one that looks like it. No, I want a Stanley cup because all of her friends have one. And so her mom said that she'll buy her one for her birthday. But I had to set her down and be like, look, don't you. you if, if you want to be an intelligent individual, you're going to be lonely. If you want to really, really be awake and actually be able to see life and everything for what it really is, you're going to be lonely. You're probably not going to have very many and, and friends. Is this the, like Stanley Cup like from hockey? 
No, I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it's just a cup by a company named Stanley, I think. Oh, my God. And the cups. It's just a regular-ass fucking thermal I, I've, I've been seeing people been going crazy over it like toilet paper. Just because the all they got to do is that they get the right influencer and the right celebrity to promote something, and fucking everybody bites the bait. And, you know, it's just a fucking cup. It's fifty fucking dollars. That's fucking retarded. Yeah, and that's just the way this. I'm just gonna start putting it out there. That's the same cup that fucking good old Stephen Hawking used to use as he watched the midgets. (laughs) So if you're gonna go get that shit, you're joining the Stephen Hawking. Yeah, yeah. But that I think that's where that we're we're at the calm before the storm. Where the next song that'll play will be like I got myocarditis (laughs) to make it okay, (laughs) right? Like. Yeah, the shot gave me this. Yeah. You know, my, my, my this, that, you know, it's going to be like, the disease X is coming next. Right? Like, and then everybody's going to go out and get a fucking new fucking disease X cup that says WHO. <laughs> who? Who? I want a who cup. Can I get a who cup? <laughs> It's got disease X on it. Can I get a who cup? That sounds like. And can I get Mario myocarditis? Can you t- take me to Walgreens to get a booster? I want myocarditis because fucking whatever. I don't even know any hip hop rappers like mainstream. I guess the only one I remember is like Chris Brown. Chris Brown saying, get the new myocarditis. <laughs> Rihanna. Or whoever, who is that? I don't need it. We're old, so we're saying old, old people. That that sings that fucking song talking about my booty hole brown. Who the fuck? Have you heard that song? Like the, no. the shit they're coming out with nowadays is so. She's, they should have said my booty hole's bleached. She said, there's this song. She said something about <laughs> my, my pussy pink, my booty hole brown. And that's like. Like she should is the song with. called that you're a dirty ass hoe you should have bleached that shit something like that like it sh- shouldn't be brown it should be bleached they're just so blatantly throwing it out there and the kids are just eating it up so i mean we got to be we're real like anybody out there with kids pay attention to what your fucking kids are listening to and what they're looking at it's, well right now after that fucking thing with the fucking commercial that's ha- playing in America yeah. for kids to kill themselves yeah. with fucking that and ask their parents and, and, and that their parents are wrong. If they think it's bad because you're supposed to die and whenever you want to die, you should die. Yeah. It's happening as a commercial to kids. YouTube. That's insane. I, I, I mean, I'm, I've been telling people and I know you're a YouTuber full time, so I, I'm not going to, I don't want to trash YouTube here, but I'm like, but telling people like this is, this place has become the, well, that's why they put yeah. us here. That's that's like I said. I've I have tried so many times to steer away, and the universe won't let me. So I know I, I feel like I'm stuck in a dark place for a reason. So again, it keeps me up at night. The universe stuck me here in YouTube world and ripped everything away from me and left me with no choice but to be like like literally. I was telling a client this the other night. Those of us who are here on mission, like actual volunteer star seeds. We don't really have a choice. Yeah, that's true. We, we don't have to sit around and think, oh, what am I supposed to do to help people? The universe is going to shove you into a corner and say, this is what you're fucking doing. And like for me, it was to a point to where if I would have said no, I would have died in a few months. Like I was, the universe ripped everything away from me and I had no choice. I would have been homeless up there in Maine in negative 30 degree weather. I would have died. So yeah. like yeah it's it's anyway anyway i'm kind of steering off track a little bit but no i think and probably would have ended up meeting hunter biden and chasing parmesan cheese on the floor <laughs> so i'm glad that didn't happen yeah no but but I mean, uh, you know nowadays they're just making it so blatantly obvious what they're doing I, I'm, I'm still trying to that that whole assisted suicide thing i'm still trying to like because you we just looked at that not too long before we came on here and and it threw me for a loop and i still haven't let it sink in all the way i can't imagine it makes sense though because nobody's taking shots but they'll take that shot especially when they pull away people's social security they pull away their fucking oh there's no more radiation for your turbo cancer there's no more meds for this so we have a solution you just want the quick out or do you want to go through the pain? Which I'd say go through the pain in the Civil War when they were chopping your leg off because of gangrene. You just had to bite the fucking piece of wood and fucking chop the foot, the leg off and fucking. Psst. And they made it through. 
I mean, like, like, like people are, don't want to face pain or just to bring up the YouTube thing. So it just came out. I don't know if you know, cause like, you know, people try to, they don't want to pay for YouTube premium. So what do they do? They put an ad blocker on cause they don't want to watch ads right on YouTube. So YouTube's it's just been proven. I'm in, you know, I'm a computer fucking geek. As you know, I build computers. I'm in the computer world. It's proven now that if you put those ad blockers on that, Google not only understands and knows that, but infects the fucking computer to run slower and oh. fucks your computer. Yeah. Apple or PC. So they've hired their own people at Google to, when that gets triggered, send a virus to your fucking computer. Well, of course. I mean, so, so people are that. And if you're already in that place, you're already a low life fucking scumbag of a soul because you're... Oh, I got to block that because I don't want to watch it because I don't want to pay the fucking whatever it is to do on premium. It's fucking like, like that shows your months. manifestation of your life. Yeah. Pay the fucking Like, premium. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. fuck. It's like 16 bucks a month. I was paying that back when I was making minimum Me wage. too. I, like, I mean, we're, we're fucking YouTubers with silver plaques. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, we're the hardest thing in social media to get to. Okay, the hardest. You can make a million subs on Instagram. That is normal. But to get 100,000 people on YouTube and actually be a creator, meaning you created all the shit yourself, is not about other people's shit. It's about the shit that you create because that's part of it too. To get that plaque is not a simple thing. Yeah. And we don't even get YouTube premium for free. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? I pay for that shit. I know. Absolutely. I've been paying for it this whole time. I mean, because back, I mean, back in, in when I first like really started hopping in the scene, I was using it for meditation music. So I want to be able to put my earbuds in and play Theta Waves so I can fucking manifest some shit. Can't do that if there's goddamn ads playing. And I want to be able to turn my phone screen off with my earbuds in and lay back and put some Theta Waves in my fucking ears because I'm manifesting shit. I'm, I'm working a minimum wage job, hating my life. I'm trying to manifest some shit. So I'm going to put my brain in the theta state. Well, I'm broke. I make minimum wage. So 16 bucks a month, when you make minimum wage, you kind of notice that. Well, I don't give a fuck. I'm paying this 16 bucks a month so that I can help myself manifest a better life. That's the mindset you have to have, you know? And, I know. And it, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just beating a dead horse. I don't know. Well, I don't think you are. I think that that's the positive of what we're at finally. I feel like we're at, you know, uh, there is no better time than honestly now until April into May to manifest the best life of your life. Shit, I'm going for it. And, 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 and if you don't, No judgment. No, we, we're not here to judge. Like, you know, but you know, this is a collective thing at this moment now. Like I, when I see what's happening around the world, it's not that I'm scared about that shit happening. It's more like people don't realize it's, you know, if you're in a place where the tentacles have reached and you're not going to, you're, you're the one who can be the change. Well, I say, and, and that's the simplest way to look at it. Well, I say, I no judgment. If if you choose like not to manifest your best life, if you're happy where you're at, that's fine. All I'm asking is, please quit bitching. Please quit bitching, because that that that's what we are here like dumping out our heart and soul, trying to help you understand that there is a way. It's possible. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what your sign is. I don't care what your skin color is. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care what your religion is. Don't care where you grew up. It's possible for you to take control of what's going on in here and manifest your best life. If you don't want to, that's fine. That's your choice. You come, you come here and experience whatever you want. But please shut up and quit bitching. Yeah. Like there's nothing I, that digs up under my skin more than somebody that bitches and bitches and bitches but doesn't want the solution. They just want a bitch. They're just addicted to complaining. Like, I can't stand that. If you choose that life, that's fine. Accept it and shut the fuck up. Right. But if you're going to bitch, listen to the solution so that you can fix the problem. Does that make sense? Of course. I mean, it, it, it reminds me of like how people are so surprised that everybody in Ukraine right now is dying because of the mice fucking plague that's starting at the same place that the black plague started of the same astrology chances we went through years ago that I said that this would be the year that the new plague that would be through mice or rats would happen. And that's the what mice? just happened in this last week is 
the mice fucking plague has happened plague. in the because it's like World War One trenches in Ukraine right now, right? So all yeah. the Ukrainian soldiers has been mice now in there living with them and rats, and they're getting sick, and so they just buried a bunch of them into a fucking pit. Oh shit. So when the plague happens, which I've been saying is going to happen, and you're fucking wondering why, oh, well, what was that? Go manifest your life right now because fucking it's already happening in the same spot back in the old days that used to be the spot to where the Black Plague started. Same river, same spot. Hmm. And this is what I, people that know and watch my, my fucking premium content know this is what I've been screaming and this is what I've been saying and it's fucking already happened. So go look it up. <laughs> fucking most people are going to be like, what? <laughs> fucking uh, go look it up. It's fucking that crazy. That is weird. So, you know, to me, it's like, what do you think's going to happen? Ukrainian fucking soldier. You're part of a war full of lies and all these lies to the people. And you're sitting there in a fucking trench and now there's rats and, and mice. And what are you really protecting? And look what happens. You know, so that's a new one to me. <laughs> I mean, that's what's already just come out. So it's, uh, the, you know, I. You know, people think of people use astrology for evil, but that's impossible. It's more like people, the evil part is when they don't share the astrology of what's going to happen. Right? So like the Pope in 1345, the astrologer gave him the astrology and said, oh, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn are so tight in a conjunction. There's going to be a fucking plague in the years that follow, like the next two, three years. This was in 1345. The Pope got the word, put himself between two fire pits and sat there for many years. By 1347, in the same place Ukraine is today, in Crimea, is where the East and the West used to meet for trade back in the 1300s. The Black Plague started happening with rats and the fucking, all the fucking people, China, but it was Mongolian back then, all the Mongolian warriors started chucking the dead bodies of the fucking plagued victims over the walls, got people sick and infected that way then all the europeans took their boats went into europe and fucking the plague spread by 1347 1348 into 49 was the peak of the plagues we're at that 30 47 into 48 same astrology as the breakup now and you're going to start to see the same black plague in the same spot and it just triggered and i've been screaming this one for years saying this is going to happen. And even on my 2024 thing, I did December 28th, which you can buy down below here on this video. I fucking said the same thing again. I gave the locations. I showed it. I said, you're going to see it's going to come in Ukraine during the war because of a fucking rat plague. And that's going to, and boom, it just happened. So. Yeah, you, you always hear, you yeah. know, from, from back in the day, people try to warn people, you know, and they say, well, why didn't anybody listen? Why didn't anybody listen? Well, you ain't listening now. I know. You know, like history repeats itself. It fuck, it, 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 the planets are what repeat itself. History follows. No. That makes sense. You know? Yeah. And, and, that, and, and so we're at that point. So, again, if your tentacles are into that, then... That's where it's going to come. And, and that, that, you know, in Europe, especially. So hopefully we motivated some people. Yeah, I, I hope so too. Especially because if, if Europeans want to save themselves from their corrupt European union, I mean, you know, you know, when the, right before the queen dies, she pulls out with Brexit. That says a lot, which I predicted would happen. Back in the day, in 2016. So, you know, it's like, you should probably pay attention when now you have these things like the WHO that are trying to make this treaty, which the it's May 22nd. That's when literally the treaty between nations has to be done. And if they sign it, they give away the rights to the nations and uh, every country will be forced vaccinated by the WHO. They declare a pandemic. They take over every country and what to do and the protocols. I mean, we are at to where this is not about being afraid, but, you know, if you're in the tentacles of any of those systems, well, if you were to be out of it, then they couldn't enforce it. But, 
your your job that has the tentacles that asked you to wear a mask to do any of that shit, that, well, it'll have to follow all that shit. And then you're going to be wondering, well, why did this happen again? You're at the job. Because if everybody weren't at those jobs, they wouldn't implement it. They'd be like, well, we can't. Imp fuck. Most people have lost the understanding of sovereign rights. You give away your rights when you take a job that requires you to do things that are against your will. And if that happened over the last four years, then you already know that it's corrupt. So people always like want to look at the government as being corrupt. It's like, it's pretty simple. They use the people that are closest around you. That's what the dark does. And, and, and you, in, in the case of the last four years, it was your job. Or your family members that forced you to do it too. If you have a family member that was forcing you to do something, they're not a good soul. They're not a good soul. They're, they wanted you to be an experiment. Like, yeah, let the doctors pull your dead body out after you took the shot to kill yourself. Like they're pushing now, right? These kid shots and shit to kill themselves. Okay. Dig, let, let, then dig up my kid's body and experiment on them. Thanks. Wonderful. Oh, well, Exciting well, times. I mean, if we're moving into this, you know, age where all this Aquarian energy is in here, I think. You know, it's because Aquarius is fixed energy. Yeah. So, you know, fixed signs. We all tend to have one thing in common. You're not going to change my fucking mind. Right. Like, if, if this is what I believe, this is what I fucking believe. And I change my beliefs on my terms. If this is the way I do things, this is the way I fucking do things. Right. If this is the choice I make. So, like, it's going to get drawn like a line in the sand where, you know, you can't be coerced. You know, or I mean, you can't be coerced one way or the other. The people who want to believe the bullshit, you're not going to be able to change their mind. The people who are saying, no, fuck that. I'm not doing it. You're not going to be able to change their mind. You're not going to be able to scare them. You're not going to be able to manipulate them. Right. You're not going to be able to shame them. So I think that's a big part of the line being drawn with this very, very fixed energy that's influencing the planet now. And eventually here really, really soon, we're going to see the final split. <laughs> Yeah, and, and and that's that's what I'm seeing that big split of the summer when Jupiter comes into Gemini like it did in 2012, but it's going to square Saturn, and that's always hard times. Jupiter squares Saturn, and and so we have to we have Jupiter Uranus conjunct in April, which is amazing. But that's a, that's in Taurus. That's another fixed sign. So that's the line. When you were saying the line, I'm thinking of all these squares of all this Aquarius to Taurus being like the opposite is Leo and Scorpio, which is where life and death and passion is, and most people are afraid to live their passions at this moment they're like terrified to actually express themselves and to end something they don't want to be in and revive their life with something they love and are deeply passionate about they'll jerk off to porn yeah. but they won't jerk off to their own life so i don't see most people coming about their life <laughs> you know what i mean yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll get through it. We'll get through it somehow, <laughs> yep. some way. You should be able to come your life all over the place. <laughs> so, well, it was great. We'll see you. And again, we are going to be in Texas. The hot state of Texas is going to be hot with that total solar eclipse. If you want to be in the middle of the day and go into night and be able to see the stars in the most rarest last eclipse that you could actually see in America for over 20 years. We'll be there in Texas. Go to teamlightstore.com. I'm, I'm sure that's what the website is. Uh, we're there with Rio. And you and Rio have a video coming out soon about it. I'm mm -hmm. sure I'll be doing one with Rio soon because him and I had talked about that. Yep. But it's going to be amazing and tickets are cheap. Yeah. And they're almost gone. So fucking it's over half sold out. So yeah, yeah. it's going to be a big one. And don't miss out where there's so many awesome people going. And this is for that. If you have always felt like you're a light worker, this is the place to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is going to be light worker central. A lot of very prominent. I don't want to say, I don't want to make people sound like they're more important than others, but some people who are playing big roles in this light worker community, people who are, we're all gathering there at that one spot. And that's the whole goal. Like Rion was saying, you know, we all gather at that one spot right, right there to radiate out to the universe. And we will we will have an effect on world peace. Yep. Yeah, we'll be in Bastrop, Texas, which is right outside Austin. And um, 
the baddest ass convention center. It's all new and nice. And then outside this huge bridge with a river where we'll be for the eclipse. And we'll be having the show there. We're going to be speaking there. We're going to be there for the eclipse part. We're coming up with all this cool gear to bring there and cool eclipse gear. So it's going to be awesome. Don't, don't miss out. I'm stoked. So it'll never happen again. So, I mean, this one's going to be like, we're going to be right where it's fucking happening. Yeah. Total yep. blackout. Going to turn nighttime there. Yep. So that's definitely a portal to send the right signal. So it was a good show. I'm looking forward. I'm glad I'm back and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.